Hello everyone, we are here in sunny Arizona and we are with Eric Cosmer. If you could just turn a little bit and say hi to the people over here. <laughs> Can we do that one more time? One more time. Okay. Yeah. Hello everyone, we are in sunny Arizona and today we are with Eric Cosmer from the San Diego Padres. And uh, we just want to get to know you a little bit more, the journey. First I want to start off with that minor league journey. I know it's a difficult one, but when you look back at it, what were some of the things that you, you take away from it? Um, well man, that was a long time ago, yeah. that's a good thing. But uh, just the relationships, the guys that I met along the way. and. Um, you know, I came up with the Kansas City Royals and um, I think a lot of those guys and I credit a lot of those guys that, um, you know, they taught me how to play the game. They um, really just uh, taught me how to go about my business. You know, I think we uh, did a good job of the players in the minor league system there of holding each other accountable and make sure um, we're doing everything. We're ready to prepare for a game and uh, to be a good teammate at the same time and, and to have good character off the field. So uh, just being surrounded by really good people was a, was a huge help for me. Now, what was it like for you when you got that that call? Uh, you're going to the big leagues. Uh, it was incredible. I still remember that uh, uh, like it was yesterday. It's definitely fresh off my mind, and um, you know, I think uh, it's every guy's dream. And uh, the cool thing about mine was I wasn't expecting it at all. It was uh, in May 5th. We were in Albuquerque, and um, you know, realistically, I thought I had a chance maybe in the second half of the season to get called up. So I uh, got out to a good start, and. Um, you know, the guy in the big leagues that was playing first at the time wasn't doing that well. So things just kind of worked out for me and I got my opportunity and got the call and, uh, you know, never looked back from that point on. Can you describe to me the moment that you stepped foot on Major League Field, like that first game? What was that like for you? That was incredible. It feels like you're you're stepping onto a stage and, um, you know, there's so many people in the stands. There's, there's the third deck, which, you know, I've never played in a stadium that had three decks. Uh, you know, it was just uh, a feeling that you know, you felt like you could run faster than anybody, throw harder than anybody, and hit a baseball farther than anyone really. And, uh, you know, I think that's a feeling that you can only really get once, maybe, or twice. And, you know, if you're in the playoffs or something like that for the first time, but just an incredible feeling and, you know, all the hard work that you put into it that, uh, you know, finally gets to, gets to pay off a little bit. Now, talking about a little bit about the heritage and the Latino heritage, I know you, you have the, the Latin connection. How has that influenced you in your life? Uh, it, it did a, a lot, you know, uh, my mother's from Cuba and, um, you know, I think a lot of the guys when she would come out and watch us in the minor leagues felt comfortable with her that didn't have their family along the way and um, it helped me get closer with these teammates and it helped me, um, you know, having seen my mom's background can relate to these guys a little better and understand stuff and, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, that's where my family says I get all the baseball skills on my Cuban <laughs> side. So, um, you know, baseball in Cuba is everything and that's the, the only sport that that really matters over there. So naturally, I grew up loving baseball and uh, never looked back. And I think for you, probably the most similar fan experience would be the WBC, where you were able to see that fandom and that excitement. Can you describe that to me? Yeah, really. it's really cool because, you know, you're playing uh, different countries throughout all the world, really. And um, you get to see how the style of the game is different. You get to see how, how the fan bases react different and just how the game's played differently th throughout the world, really. And uh, you know, in Latin America in particular, there's, there's a lot of energy that comes with that crowds. It's a lot of passion and uh, it's a loud environment. And I think as baseball players, you love that because it's exciting to play in front of. And, um, you know, baseball is usually a game that you try and stay pretty uh, even keel throughout. And uh, when you get in front of those atmospheres and those crowds, you, uh, you know, it, it brings out a different energy and a different vibe. And it's a different type of flair too that a lot of you guys play with. I mean, even your your mom is on the Cuban side, but I feel like you and even Tatis and Manny Machado, you guys have that little bit of swag that you bring into this game, which which is, I think, what a lot of the fans really want to see. Yeah, you definitely, um, you know, everyone has their certain flair they put onto it. Uh, but that's just, um, you know, it's it's kind of your own style. It's your own personal fit, whatever you feel like. And, you know, guys come up along the way. You learn different things. You learn different things with uh, your footwork and different stuff like that. So, um, you know, naturally Latin guys are a little better at footwork because we can dance <laughs> a little bit better. So, uh, you know, I think that's where, you know, a lot of the stuff and a lot of the flash in the field comes to. Talking about footwork, is your dance good? Or is your salsa moves good? It's not bad. My okay. hip mobility has been unbelievable this spring, though. So I think my salsa dance is getting a little better. <laughs> OK, well, that's going to maybe, maybe <laughs> that can be like a type of training for some guys if they want to get their Yeah, dance. exactly. Okay can always be flexible. It's good to be flexible in baseball, especially at first when you're going out for those stretches and stuff. So that's good. Exactly. Now talking about a couple of these young guys like Tatis, uh, 
what has been the impact that he has brought to this team? Oh man, he's uh, he's incredible. Um, you know, I, I think back to the, this off season in the winter. Uh, you know, um, one of my little cousins was over at the house and was wearing a headband, and I told him that was a sweet headband, and he said he wears it because of Tatis. So, um, you know, it shows how powerful it is. We play on the West Coast in San Diego, and kids all over the world really look up to him already and understand how he plays the game, and um, and he goes about everything the right way. So that's the coolest thing, uh, especially having my little cousin look up to him, or plenty of my little cousins look up to him, and understanding the person he is off the field and um, the teammate he is as well. It just uh, it makes you proud and. And it makes you happy to know that guys are, are and your family looking up to the right guy. Who was somebody that you looked up to growing up? Um, I looked up to, you know, Ken Griffey Jr., Derek Jeter, and, um, you know, those are two of the guys that I always watched. They were always on TV, and, you know, Ken Griffey was always on the cover of all the baseball video games and all that stuff. And being a left-handed hitter, I tried to have my swing just as smooth as he did. And, um, you know, those were definitely two guys that I always looked up to growing up. And who was somebody that, once you came into the game, was kind of like your mentor that took you under their wing? Uh, well, when I came up with the Royals, you know, there was guys like Chris Getz and Matt Trainer that, um, you know, were veteran guys that really helped me and took me under their wing, and uh, Mike Avilas as well. And, um, you know, it's just something to be said when you come up to the big leagues, especially at a young age, you're pretty nervous. And, um, you know, you, you, when you have guys that make you feel comfortable, make you feel like you belong on the team, I think it helps you settle in a little more and, uh, you know, brings out your talent and brings you, uh, you know, that comfort that you can just go out and trust your game and feel like you belong there. Now, when we're talking about flair, uh, your teammate, Will Myers, made some noise uh, for his bat flip. What do you think about the bat flip? <laughs> Uh, everyone's got their flair. That's what it is, and that's Will's. You know, Will likes to, he likes to, you know, hit, throw that bat almost as far as he hit the ball. So as long as he keeps hitting balls like that, uh, you know, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah, that's that's the part, right? As long <laughs> as you can hit them, you do do whatever you want. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think baseball's at a point now where uh, that stuff's accepted, and uh, you know, everybody uh, understands you're not doing it to show up somebody else. You're doing it to to bring excitement and joy to your team. Yeah, and, I, and something that I had said is kind of talking about this back and forth and I said you know yes it's only spring training but there's still fans out here they want to see a show and that's part of the show yeah that sounds beaming out here they want to have some fun while they're watching the game so that definitely brings a lot of excitement who does it better who's a better dresser on this team who's the best dresser um well we had a, we had a Manny Machado dress uh dress up day so I think uh you know Manny holds that right he's got a, a lot of swagger he's got a lot of stuff that Many people can't pull off, but he pulls it off. So Manny's, Manny's a pretty solid dresser. Best hair? Ooh. Um, I'll give that one to Toddy. Toddy's got uh, the different colors going on and the braids and all that stuff and a lot of cool designs in the, in the side of his head. So Toddy's got a lot of swag, and he would be right at the top of probably all these categories, and I'd say <laughs> hair is definitely his. Best dancer? Ooh, that's Toddy for sure, yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, Toddy can move. He can move. Well, that's true. I did follow him on social, and I saw some of his moves on the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can see a lot of his stories and stuff. And Toddy's one that uh, he's good at whatever he does. You can put him on a golf course, a baseball field, or a dance floor, and he'll be he'll be the best at it. What music are you listening to right now? Um, I like hip hop music. Uh, I've, I'm, I've been listening to a lot of the old old school hip hop stuff, uh, kind of like the '90s and 2000s hip hop. Uh, those are my playlists on Spotify. Favorite artist. Um, I'm a young Jeezy fan, a big young Jeezy fan. I think that's, uh, you know, relating back to that 2000s hip hop, I think he was one of the best at that time. What song do you have on repeat? Um, man, that's tough. That changes a lot. Um, What's one that you maybe play right before you head out to the game? Um, I don't know. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of house music that goes on before the game, so that a uh, Avicii level song is something that fires me up. So that might be the one I play before the game. Lastly, what are you, uh, what are you guys looking forward to this season? And what do you think, do you think you guys have what it takes to make it to that final round in October? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I think that we're going to go out and have fun. We trust in our teammates, trust in each other's abilities. and. Um, you know, I think if we can be consistent with our attitude and how we prepare and come to the field each and every day, which is the hardest thing to do in baseball because you're playing so many games, then I think we'll be all right at the end of the season. So, um, you know, obviously everybody feels good about their team in spring training and we feel really good about ours. So uh, it's just a matter of staying healthy, going out there and trusting our abilities and, uh, you know, perform. Actually, one more question. Um, there's been a lot being said about the spin rate, right, about the, from the ball. You as a hitter, is there a difference? Is there something that makes it more difficult when a guy does have a higher spin rate than 
just throwing hard? Yeah, there's there's definitely a lot that goes into it. You know, uh, as a hitter, you try and pick up the pitcher's arm slot as quick as you can. So, um, you know, I think those are certain things that hitters look for. So the quicker you can pick up that arm slot uh, on a guy that has higher spin rate, you might have a little better chance of catching up to his fastball. But um, everybody throws hard nowadays. So, you know, no matter if it's velocity or spin rate, you know it's going to get in there hard. And uh, you just got to be ready to go pretty early. Awesome. Thank you.